By the end of this video, you're going to be able to evaluate logarithms at speeds comparable to the speed of light. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. So we're going to start with some basic logs. So we'll talk about what this notation even means. And we'll also talk about what happens when our log doesn't have a base. After we go through all that, we're going to talk about some harder logs. So what happens when we have log of zero, log of negative numbers. And of course, we're going to touch on logs with fractions. And I remember everybody used to despise these. After we go through that, we're going to get into natural logs. So what does this ln thing even mean? And then we'll talk about log equations. So this is where x is going to be in some different spots and we'll have to figure that out. And lastly, after we go through all of that, I'm gonna give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and when I say that, I mean the principal version of the notes that I made especially for you guys, I have that linked right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video where you and I will go through and evaluate 17 more logarithms, and we'll also go through and do eight problems with log properties as well. So when we have logs being added, subtracted, and when we have things inside the logs being multiplied, divided, and to powers as well. So we're gonna start off with these basic logs. And looking at our first log, we have log base five of 25. So how are we gonna simplify that or honestly do anything with it? Like what is a log? Let's talk about that. So we don't know what this log is, so we're gonna set it equal to x. And then here is all we have to do. We're going to take this five and we're gonna make it bigger. The, the base of our log, we make that bigger. Now, these two pieces, they're gonna do sort of a circular motion. So this X is going to come over to the left side and it's going to become the exponent on that five. And then that 25 is gonna to go to the other side. And there you go. Now you can see what this log was actually asking for. It's saying five to what power is equal to 25? And we know five to the second power is 25, right? X is equal to two. And so what that means is that log base five of 25 is equal to two. So there we go, our first log is done. Now, this is one way you can think about it with this whole circular motion. There's some other ways that people like to think about this too. Another way that's commonly taught is the acronym BAP, also pronounced BAP. And for that, these letters are in order here. So the B corresponds to the five, the A corresponds to the 25, and the P corresponds to the X. And what this stands for is base answer power. So the first number, the base here of our logarithm five, that is the base of the exponent. A, that's 25 here, that's the answer. So that's what goes on the right side. And then our P here, X, becomes the power. And so maybe that's an easier way for you to think about this all, but I like this way the best personally. So we'll move on now to log base three of 27. And again, we don't know what this is. We set it equal to X. And from here, it's the same process. The base of our log is what we are going to make bigger. So we put a big three right there. And then the 27 and the X are what do that circular motion. So the X comes over to the left side and it's the power on the three and the 27 goes to the other side. And so what this log is asking is, well, three to what power is equal to 27? Well, three to the third power. Three times three times three is 27. So we know that log base three of 27 is equal to three. Now there's one other thing that you might be thinking here, and that's, well, why don't we just write it like this in the first place? Why don't we say that that's what we're asking for rather than writing with this weird log thing and introducing all this notation? Well, there are reasons why we use logs, a lot of reasons. I'm not gonna talk about all of them in this video. I'll give you one basic reason and maybe that'll kind of keep you going for now. If we want to, let's say that that was a lot messier, right? We couldn't just solve it easily like we did. And we want to plug it into our calculator and find the value of X. Well, we can't really do that as it sits now. And so if we write it like this, we say, well, X is what we're trying to find. We know that's log base three of 27. This is something you can plug in to your calculator. So if you never end up learning the other reasons why we use logs, then at least you know that it helps us put things in our calculator. So let's move on to these last two logs here. First, we have the log of 10. And you'll notice that this log doesn't have a base on it. Usually we have a base, like here we had three. So what do we do? 
Well, when a log doesn't have a base, that means the base is 10. And now we're just doing everything that we've done before. So this 10 is going to become bigger. The X goes and becomes the power on it. And this 10 goes to the other side. And so what we're asking with this log is 10 to what power is equal to 10? And well, one. 10 to the first power is equal to 10. So that means that log of 10 is equal to one. And we do the same thing with log of 10,000. Again, you don't see that base there. That means the base is 10. And what we can do from here, set this equal to X and make the 10 bigger move the X to be the power on the 10, and the 10,000 goes to the other side. And now what we're asking is 10 to what power is equal to 10,000? Let's think about that. We know that 10 squared is 100. 10 to the third power is 1,000. And so 10 to the fourth power, that would be 10,000. So X is four. And what that means is that log of 10,000 is equal to four. Awesome. So now we're gonna move on to some harder logs. We're gonna start off with these logs right here, log of one, zero, and negative one, and then we'll get into those fraction logs. So starting with log of one here, again, that's another case where you don't see a base on that log, so we're gonna put that base of 10 and we want to find what this is. We don't know. We set it equal to X. Now let's do the same process we've been doing. 10 gets bigger. X goes to the left hand side as the exponent and the one goes to the right. And so what we're asking with this log is 10 to what power is equal to one? Well, anything to the zero power is equal to one. So that means that X is zero here. And so log of one is equal to zero. And moving on to log of zero, we'll do the same exact thing that we just did. The log doesn't have a base, we put a base of 10. And we set it equal to X. From there, do your trick again. The 10 gets bigger. The X becomes the power. The zero goes to the other side. And now what we're asking is 10 to what power is equal to zero? And so you can think about that for a little bit, but you're not gonna come up with anything. You can't put 10 to any power and end up getting zero. So what's the value of X? Well, X is undefined. And that means that log of zero is undefined. There is no value for it because there's no value of X that can make this equation work. So what about log of negative one? Because we haven't dealt with log of a negative number yet. Well, again, we put that base of 10 in there. We set it equal to X and we do the same process that we've been doing. So this will be 10 to the X is equal to negative one. And again, I mean, 10 to what power is equal to negative one? How could you put 10 to some power and get a negative number? That just, that can't happen. If it was any negative number, so negative one, negative two, negative three, it all wouldn't work. So again, X is undefined and you have that log of negative one is undefined. And so the takeaway here is that you can't take the log of zero or a negative number. It's undefined. And that is precisely because these equations don't work. There's no value of X that will satisfy them. And so now that we've talked about that, let's move on to those fraction logs. Let's try to figure out those. Now for this first log, we do have a base. We have a base of eight, so that's nice. We can set this equal to X and already start doing our little circle trick. Eight is going to become bigger. We'll put it over here. Then we have the X that goes and becomes the power on eight and the one over 64 goes to the other side. 
And so what we're asking here is eight to what power is equal to one over 64? And if you're not too good with negative exponents, it might be hard to figure that out. But here's all you gotta know. You might be able to see here that since we're talking about taking eight to some power and we're having a 64 there, you might be like, oh yeah, 64, that's eight squared. And so now you see we have an eight in the denominator, but over here, I mean, we want that eight up on top. We want it in the numerator so we can actually compare it to this guy. And so we want to put eight squared up to the numerator. Now we can do that, that is something that we're allowed to do, but remember, if we do that, we have to make the exponent negative. It's positive here, so we have to make it negative. And let's say that it was negative, you'd have to make it positive. That's how negative exponents work. And if you're looking for more on that, you really want to review your negative exponents, I have a whole other YouTube video on that. But yeah, if you look here, now you can see that x is negative 2. And if we know that x is negative 2, then that means that log base 8 of 1 over 64 is negative 2. And that is our answer. Now, what about log base 2 of 1 over 8? Well, that's the same thing. Set it equal to x, do the same stuff we've been doing with make the 2 bigger, x goes to the left, becomes the power, 1 over 8 goes to the other side. And we're trying to take 2 to some power here and you see the 8 and you're like oh well 8 is 2 cubed but we want that 2 cubed up in the numerator so we just have to make that exponent negative you now see that x is negative 3 and there you go you have everything you need you know that log base 2 of 1 over 8 is equal to negative 3 So that was a bunch of log stuff, but what about when we talk about natural logs? What are natural logs? What does this ln mean? Well, you deal with natural logs a lot more in things like calculus and stuff, but what this really means, this natural log, it's the same thing as log with a base of e. So whenever you see an ln, just replace it with a log base e. And e, by the way, that's a really important number. That's like 2.718 something. And you'll talk about why this number is so important in calculus. So if you, if you end up taking calculus, you'll understand more of why we care so much about e. Anyways, let's go figure out what this log is real quick. We make the e bigger, put the x as the exponent here, and the one goes on the other side. So now we have e to some power equals one. What is that power? Well, anything to the zero power is equal to one, so x is zero. And that means that natural log of one is zero. Awesome. Now what about natural log of e squared? Well, again, we see that natural log, we replace that with a log with a base of e. And keep that e squared. And from here, let's set that equal to x and make the e bigger put the x over as the power on the e, and that's equal to e squared, which is the thing that goes on the right. And from here you can see that x is equal to two, which means that the natural log of e squared is equal to two. So the last thing I want to talk about in this video is log equations, and this is going to be pretty quick. Really, it's the same thing that we've been doing, it's just now the x is going to be in a different place. So let's quickly go through these. So first, we're doing the same thing, x is going to be getting bigger here, 2 comes and is now the power on x, and 81 goes to the other side. So with this, we're asking what squared is 81, and of course you know that's 9. So x is going to be equal to 9 here. And you might also be like, oh, well, shouldn't it also be negative 9 as well? Because negative 9 squared is also 81. Well, it is. Yeah, that's true. But we can't have a negative in the base of our log. That's just a rule about logs. So no, we can't have negative 9 also as a solution. So let's solve for x in this problem now. Again, we do the same process. We make the 4 bigger. The 4 comes over to the exponent. And this x goes to the other side. And so we get that 4 to the 4th power is equal to x. So the question is, what is 4 to the 4th power? Well, 4 to the 4th power is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. And well, 4 times 4, that's 16. 
And again, 4 times 4 is 16. So 4 to the 4th power is the same as 16 times 16. And you can do that out, that's 256. And that means that x is 256. And that's going to do it for the last problem for this video. So hopefully this has you feeling much more comfortable now with evaluating logarithms. And if you're feeling pretty good with this, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Tell me what log base 4 of 64 is. So try that out. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you when I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video where you and I will go through and evaluate 17 more logarithms. And we're also gonna do eight problems with log properties. So, you know, what happens when we have two logs being added or subtracted? And what happens when inside the log we have things being multiplied, divided and to, to powers too? We'll go through all of that in those problems. So if you're looking for more practice with all this log stuff, especially Especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff, then definitely check out that extra video in the description down below. And while you're there, you can snag the notes for this video too. Lastly, make sure that you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. I would try to convince you right now and give you reasons why you should subscribe, but I'm kind of running behind right now. I got to get some more videos recorded for you guys today. So I'm going to go do that. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video and I'll see you soon.